Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Katie and I'm an artist and I'm currently undertaking an almost daily art challenge. So I'm creating a new painting or drawing six days a week from Sunday until Friday, so I take Saturdays off. So every couple of weeks I'm going to be running through all the pieces that I've created, talk to you a little bit about the themes that I'm seeing emerging and if I'm noticing any patterns and any of the things that I've learned so far. I'm not doing any prompts or anything like that, sometimes I'm doing some prompt challenges that I'm finding on Instagram or just taking random references from Pinterest or things like that so there's no set theme or anything and I'm also not limiting myself with set mediums. The whole point of this challenge was to try new things, try new markers, try different like, painting techniques and things so I'm excited to see where it takes me. And like I said, every few weeks I'm going to come here on YouTube and talk a little bit about what I've learned so far. So I've got a, I've got a little list here which helps me to keep track of what I've created. And so we're going to be running through weeks two and three today and let's get started. So the pieces which I'm creating for this challenge aren't going to be in one sketchbook because I thought that would be too limiting. So it's either going to be in this large paper chase sketchbook, which is really good for mixed media because the pages are nice and thick, or this C. White Brighton Eco sketchbook, which is slightly smaller, or I'm doing them loose on smaller scraps of paper, which I have in my stash. So I did one video for the first week of the challenge, which was days one to six, but I'm going to be doing them in two week batches now. So this is day seven. So this is using one of my own references from when I went to Tokyo, which was in 2020. So just before the world shut down, we were lucky enough to visit Japan. And this one I tried something new. I tried to use an underpainting, which I did in acrylics. So you can see the pink underpainting peeking through all over the place. And I went over the top with gouache and Neocolor pastels. I didn't use any coloured pencil in this one, I just kept it to those mediums and I really like the effect. I think some of the blending on the Neo Colour pastels work really well in making it feel quite dreamy and ethereal and overall I'm pleased with this piece. It was definitely an experiment with the underpainting um, and I do think that without that I don't think this piece would be quite as successful or give the same sort of feelings. The underpainting made it quite tricky to place the gouache on top. I know a lot of artists use casein, um, James Gurney definitely does a lot of underpainting with casein and then works over the top with gouache so I think it would work better if I tried that but it was a good experiment. Next up is a loose piece of artwork and I created this little chocolate cake and this one I was having a bad art day, originally it looked like this which I didn't show on Instagram on my grid but I did pop it in my stories and it's just something about this was missing. I don't think the colours work and it's just very boring and flat. So I redid it and I much prefer the version which I created afterwards. Um, I quite like the texture with the gouache. It's very pale and simple. It's not very detailed but I really like the colours that I used and I think this is a much more successful attempt. So day 9 was back in the big sketchbook and I tried doing some figure drawing. So I always try and avoid doing people just because I think that's one of the most obvious things or one of the biggest challenges when you are unsure on your style because there are so many different ways to do people, different ways to do the eyes, different ways to, um, you know, whether you're going to keep it realistic or keep the proportions the same or keep it with having line work or just coloured. So I always try and avoid figures for that reason. But I did enjoy these and I used to draw people all the time so it was nice to sort of throw it back to that time and definitely something I want to get more comfortable with. On my Instagram you'll notice that the picture doesn't include this lady. Um, originally when I was doing this spread I wanted it to be quite full and just random figures on the page but it turned into sort of a scene and she definitely threw it off so I just erased her for the image and Eventually I will finish this page, but I do like the like the colours, it feels very vintage with the graphite and the yellow. Um, I think that was just gouache. One of the things which I'm finding in the sketchbook is that I don't want the colours to rub off onto the next page. 
um, and they are, so I've started putting these palette sheets in between, but I definitely want to find some like proper acetate sheets or vellum to put in between because my sketchbook's getting very dirty and messy. So next up was a very little one um, because I didn't have that much time and that was these blueberry muffins and this was referenced using an image from Jem who is the mother cooker over on Instagram and I'll pop links to all the references down below. This was just a really quick study and I used gouache and coloured pencils and it's simple, it's fine, it's nothing groundbreaking but again the colours are quite nice and yeah quite a simple piece. So next up was probably my biggest undertaking and if you've seen my recent video then you'll have seen the speed paint for this one and this is this scene in Paris. I did film this one so I'll pop some footage over top but like I say if you did want to see the final video or the final speed paint then that's on my channel. And I'm really pleased with this one. I, I really like the colours, I really like the pink with the green, the budding was originally like creamy coloured so I like that I changed it to pink and I did change the cafe colours as well. I definitely prefer the top half of this compared to the bottom half. I definitely rushed it um, in the bottom, it could have had a lot more detail but that's the thing with the daily challenge is that I don't have that much time and so I am limited in that sense. If I wanted to do a large scale piece I'd need to have like the full day for it. But it was definitely something to learn from, it's my first full scene for a long time um, and I don't want to be too harsh on myself, I think overall it's, it's a nice result and I'm really pleased with this one. Oh and also this one I did in gouache and neo colour pastels and coloured pencils so they're my like trio, um, my holy grail of materials and generally I'll use them in all of my art pieces. So the last one, which is day 12, so the last one of week 2, was an orange house in here, which was a National Trust house that I did on location. So this is a plain air piece, which means I drew it when I was there in the grounds, and this was on a day trip with my parents. And this was at Up Park House, which is in Hampshire. And yeah, it was a really quick one because, like I said, I was on a day trip. I didn't want to hold my family up too much by, you know, doing a really in-depth study in my sketchbook so I'm really pleased with this one. I didn't finish it completely um, on location, I didn't have the orangey red for the bricks and I didn't have a blue so I just added that in after but it's quite a simple one but it was really popular on social media which I was surprised at because to me it's very basic. It's, when I look at it like in depth it's very wonky, you can tell I started it on my lap like the perspective is wrong, the lines don't like aren't in parallel at all. So I was surprised at um, how many people like this one, but it's definitely got a charm to it, which I think is what people are attracted to. Okay, so this next one was part of an Instagram art challenge, and it was for this friendly little whale guy. And I'm really, really pleased with how this one came out. It feels very like it could be in a children's book, um, it definitely feels like there's a story there. I really like the colours, although when I did it I was slightly disappointed because it didn't come out how I wanted in my head. I think it would be nice if maybe the sky was blue instead of this dark purple and then the sea was darker, so if I swap these tones around because the whale does get a little bit lost. But I like these bright colours and I think I can definitely improve on the water, so that's something I can take forward with me. This was part of the Summer Creativity Challenge, which was a prompt list over on Instagram, which was just whale, um, and yeah, I think considering I haven't done a whale before or any sort of sea life scene, I think this one was quite successful. You'll notice as well there's some pink highlighting, which wasn't intentional. That was just done with white gel pen, but it reacted with the gouache underneath. Um, which created these sort of pink lines, which definitely gives it more of a nighttime feel, so not necessarily a mistake. Day 14 was this tiny little pillia plant. I really want a pillia to add to my houseplant collection, 
um, and I was very low on time this day so this one took about 10 minutes. I used my jelly gouache which I have got an unboxing and a speed paint on my channel again which I can link down below but I just used those colours and added some pencil texture over the top. Um, I'm really happy with how the colours came out and it's very basic, very simple but it was good to do when I had very little time. So day 15 I used a new medium for me and did this marker piece in my little sketchbook. So I've not used markers before, I do have quite a few of them but I usually use it on top of mixed media pieces just to add details um, and I haven't used markers in a very very long time. I wouldn't say this one was successful in terms of how it's been done, I think the background and the house is way too light and the foreground should be the lightest part. So I think I could mix those tones up a little bit, um, but I do like the colours that I've used. It feels very abstract because of the pinks and the purples. And although this one is technically not very good, something about it I really like. I think it's because I'm trying a new medium and I don't think it was necessarily a failure. I had a lot of fun with it. It was really easy to put colours down and I did add a lot of Neocolor pastel on top just to add more details. But I think that's mostly because I was limited with the markers that I do have. I didn't have loads of colours so obviously I just had to use what I could. I think in the future I can definitely use that more to my advantage but it was nice to create something with markers that I don't usually do. And this is what I want my sketchbook to be about. I want it to be fun and loose and this one sort of sums it up for me. So. I think this one was definitely a success. Okay, so back into my big sketchbook for the next one. And this one is very, very bright. This sketchbook's larger than A4. I would say it must be just over A3 size for this full spread. And yes, it's very bright, very loose. I used acrylic paints for this one rather than gouache. And obviously I added some Neocolor pastels over the top. This one was very easy, I didn't think too much about this one. I really liked the looseness of it. The colours didn't come out like I wanted in my head, but I think they work really well together, like the bright yellows and the greens. Again, I was limited with my acrylic colours because I don't have that many because I favour gouache normally. But I think it works quite well with this one. I really like adding pink highlights to little edges of the scene and it's something that I've noticed myself doing recently so that's one thing that I've picked up during this art challenge. I think it makes it way more visually interesting and definitely something I'm going to take on in the future as well. So yeah, I like this one. I think it's nice to fill up a full spread in my sketchbook. Okay, so the next one, which is day 17, was done after a day trip out with my parents again, and we went to Arundel Castle, which is in West Sussex. So I created this when I got home, using two photos which I took on my phone. So this is one part of the castle gardens, and then this is at the entrance when you come in. So I merged these two together, they don't actually sit together in real life. And this one was quite quick when I got home. Um, I didn't want to spend too long. And you can see here that the pink color from the other page is coming through, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, it's obviously because I worked on the other side and it's smudged with the pink. So it's definitely an issue I'm having with my sketchbooks where I'm working in them so much at the moment, where the, like, the media isn't fixed on the page. So I think I might need to get a fixing spray because I did try hairspray and um, which I picked up in my DCSE art lessons but it doesn't seem to be working so I think I need to actually invest in some art fixative spray but yeah this one is okay um it's nice to fill another spread in my sketchbook it's nice and colorful and bright but I definitely could have worked a lot more on it again I was constrained by time um I think it would be elevated if I kept working on it and added in way more details, especially in the castle area. But considering I didn't have that much time, I think it's quite a successful piece. 
So last up for day 18, I created another piece in my little sketchbook again and created these yellow flowers. This was done in gouache and the reason I did these was because I do try and look at what I've created on my Instagram spread and it was getting very green heavy so I wanted to do something really bright. This one didn't really work out because it's still very green and yellow but I think it looks okay. Uh, it was done in gouache and then coloured pencil over the top so I didn't actually use new colour pastels on this one. It was a very basic study done using a photo I took when I was on my day trips with my parents and yeah, it's fine, it's nothing groundbreaking but um, just quite an easy painting. So during these last two weeks of creating these pages and paintings, um, I've definitely found I've had a bit less time than I did on the first week. So. Uh, I feel like a lot of them are quite rushed and quick paintings, um, especially the little ones, but I did push myself definitely on some of the things, so I used markers for the first time, I pushed myself and did some figure drawing, so I'm not just in my comfort zone of landscapes, and although some things didn't work out, like the original cake image, I definitely pushed myself to recreate that and do something new. So yeah, even though I might not create my most favourite pieces um, in this challenge, it's still really, it's not necessarily about quantity over quality because I'm still really striving to create good work. But if I do create something which I'm being harsh on myself with, then I might still share it. But again, there is a line there and I think, I think it's okay to redo something if I'm not pleased with it. If I don't have time, then I'll share it as it is. Um, I'm not afraid of creating bad artwork and the whole idea of this challenge was to create more um, so I will create bad artwork and ugly artwork and definitely one of the things which I learned from week one was that um, I was being quite a perfectionist with it and I was quite worried about the end result and I think these past two weeks I've definitely leant back from that a little bit and I don't feel like I've been that precious in my sketches or my drawings this week and last, so that's good. I'm, I feel like I'm getting a bit looser and that's exciting because I want to see where I go from here. Um, the next few weeks I think I want to push myself again, try new things, try new mediums and I definitely feel like I'm having a bit more fun, um, which is good and I'm really excited to see where the next few, well, almost the next year um, takes me because there are quite a few days left of this challenge but um, I think it's going really well and I'd love to hear what you think down below if you have a favourite. I think my favourite from these past two weeks might be the whale. Um, I'm really pleased with this little guy and I do really like that marker piece um, just because it was new for me and um, it was everything that I wanted to be in terms of experimentation. Let me know your favourites down below and if you want to keep up to date with my challenge day to day then the best place to follow me is on Instagram because I'm posting daily apart from Saturday so these roundup videos will be a couple of weeks past the day where I actually do them but I hope it gives you a little bit more insight into what I'm feeling at the time. I hope you enjoyed watching I'll see you on Sunday with a new video and I hope you have a lovely rest of your week. See you later.